Alright everybody, time to talk about what I'm currently playing on the Switch. This is Freedom Finger. This is a horizontal shoot 'em up where you play as a flying finger spaceship in outer space. Uh, as you can see, you can shoot enemies, you can also do punch attacks, and it has a really cool heavy metal soundtrack going with it. Kind of really makes it compelling to play. Definitely check it out. Hello everybody and welcome to a new video and today I want to talk about a company called Super Rare Games. Now Super Rare Games, they've been out a little over a year and if you, if you haven't heard of them, they put out a limited quantity of indie type games for the Nintendo Switch in the physical format. So a lot of you guys collect for the Switch might want to look their way if you see some titles uh, that you might like. Now I gotta admit when they first came out, one of their first games was a, a game called Human Fall Flat. I saw that and I, I just kind of like, whoa, okay, I turned my head. But as I've been watching them, they've gotten a lot of better titles in their library. And I want to talk about a couple of them today. So let's get right to it. So I'm probably committing a sin here. A lot of folks don't open their limited print games, but not me. I just want to show you guys the inside and just how cool it looks. Because when you get stuff like this, uh, these limited releases, they come with manuals and all kind of other good stuff as well. First off, we have Rive Ultimate Edition. Now I played this a couple years ago on the PS4 and it was a really fun game, but I kind of fell off from it. Uh, so this Ultimate Edition add some new things like a, a co-pilot mode um, 48 uh, achievements okay I thought the other one had trophies but that's okay and loads faster and plays smoother um, I definitely think it loads faster uh, it plays around the same I think uh, this uh, real fast though this is a twin stick shooter so you can pretty much shoot in all directions pretty easy uh, what I like about this game mostly is that the character that you're playing as the pilot he's always talking throughout certain events in the game so it really kind of like brings you into the story mode of the game. I really don't know why I fell off from this game. Uh, it w I was having a blast when I played it a couple years ago and I was having a great time playing it now. I just maybe I got stuck on a certain part and I just kind of fell off from it you know but after playing this I definitely want to get back into the game again. It's a lot of fun. It's funny. It's got a lot of humor to it and you know I'm seeing some polish that, that wasn't in the original version I played so I, I, I would definitely say this is the best version to get of the game if you're able to get it. Also, you do get to upgrade your weapons in this game. Uh, what you do is you when you uh, beat enemies, they usually drop parts and that's considered money in this game. So you'll go to a computer and you'll you'll get upgrades like uh, like, uh, like being, being able to move around faster, uh, weapons of course, and just all kind of cool abilities. So like I said, Rive is a cool game guys, uh, definitely uh, give it a, a shot. Next up we have Earthlock. I originally played this on the PS4 and this game has a lot of potential. I actually was enjoying it up until a certain point but then I stopped playing it because of certain issues the game had. This version actually fixes all the issues with that game and it's kind of almost like a brand new game. One thing I noticed immediately about this game is that it really feels like a sixth generation game, meaning more like a PS2 RPG. Uh, I just the way everything plays out. Um, of course, um, I like the way of like uh, there's not really any voice acting in the game. You know, you read all the text, and it kind of gives you like your own imagination of how the characters probably sound or talk. I always thought so ever since Final Fantasy X came out and we got that voice acting in it, you know, we were kind of spoiled with too much voice acting in uh, like RPG games, but. You know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, you know, or anything, but I do like how this game goes back to like the old RPGs where you just read all the dialogue pretty much. Now, with the footage being shown to you here, you can actually see this as a turn-based RPG. Pretty simplistic, I would say. It's pretty easy to get into. You, you could switch like styles of how your character fights, you know, close range, you know, um, air combat, stuff like that. You really kind of help change things up depending on what enemy you're fighting. This new Switch version of the game feels like it has no load times, which is pretty amazing. It helps the game really flow. Another thing I noticed uh, playing this game on the Switch is that, uh, I don't know if you could do this in the original version before, but 
when I was in a battle, you could actually, while you're fighting the enemy, you could actually play dead and confuse your enemy, which is pretty hilarious. I thought that was like that was like a pretty cool trick. And when you do that, you have a little bit of time to get away from them. Uh, I just, I don't know. I just thought that was pretty funny. So just a little bit of story about the game as well, since I haven't talked about the story. Basically, you're trying to save the planet uh, that's been in trouble for quite some time. The planet has stopped rotating. And I don't know if you guys are like in astronomy or anything like that, but if a planet stops spinning or any comes anywhere close to stop spinning, I mean, that planet is pretty much done, like explosion, lava, just pretty much like all kinds of bad. So uh, that, there's your story mode in the game. But I really feel one of the game's strong points from what I remember was that uh, the character development. Now, the characters, they don't, they you, you play as separate characters in the beginning and they all like are doing their own thing. But there's a certain point in the game where they all kind of meet. And that's I think that's where the game really picks up at. So right now you're seeing the beginning parts of the game. What I wanted to ask you guys is, what did you guys think of this game? And from where you're at, where do you guys think this game picks up at? You know, I got to a certain part uh, in a couple years ago, and I just kind of just really fell off from it. But now it really seems like it's different. You know, I feel something that's just, it just it's really fast paced. The story really moves along, it seems. So, I don't know. I think this, this go around is going to be good for me. So, let me know what you guys think. But anyway, here is Earthlock for the Switch. Uh, if you have a chance to pick this one up, I think you should give it a go. Next up, we have the Dark Side Detective, where you play as Detective Francis McQueen. Um, the game starts where you can um, pretty much go to two different cases and you can unlock others as I guess you progress through the game. Now this game is a point and click adventure, kind of reminiscent of the old games on PC like maybe Indiana Jones, Carmen San Diego, things like that. You're trying to discover what's going on in certain cases and you'll ask people questions and the people are actually, I mean, pretty creepy and every scenario I was in, they, just, they were just kind of really, I don't know, just outrageous answers that they gave me for like trying to like one case I was trying to help a guy find his daughter. Uh, he didn't seem like he cared. Another case was a library that was haunted. This is some pretty crazy stuff. This is definitely the type of game that I would love to play on the Switch because it feels like it was made for that system. You know, playing this on maybe like the PS4 or Xbox One or something, this game would probably get lost in the mix. But on the Switch, it just feels like this, this is the right system to play this game on. Especially if you could play a game like this, laying in bed or whatnot, or just relaxing on the couch. The one thing about this game, and I want to say it's kind of a pet peeve for me, is that the characters in the game, they just really creep me out. How they have faces, but with no eyeballs, and no nose, no mouth, you know, just these blank faces. And, you know, it just, when it shows the dialogue boxes, it just really just it feels kind of creepy. But uh, <laughs> that's just something for me. Uh, I don't know if anybody else feels like that, but let me know what you guys think about that, because I just think that's like, ugh. But anyways... Let me know what you guys think about point and click adventures. I don't really hear many people talk about these games anymore and it'd be nice to hear you guys' thoughts about them. And last but not least, we have Evo Land Legendary Edition. Now, Jason actually talked about this on a pickups video we did a couple months back. And I was trying, I had heard of the game before, but I just couldn't get it set in my mind. Now that I'm playing it now, this game is just really, really cool. Um, I've never seen a game uh, ever evolve while I play it. And I, th I think that an, was an amazing idea by the developers who made this. Now, I, I only played the first game that's a part of this series. You get two games in this bundle here. And I decided to go with the first one first, of course, it's just to kind of, that's what everybody will most likely play anyways. And you can see how it starts off like a Game Boy game. And then as you get treasure chests in this game, um, they'll come with cool stuff like music. And then the game will have music all of a sudden, different colors, better graphics. It's just like, this is really cool how it does that. And it kind of makes you want to keep playing and say, oh man, how good can this game really look? Like you want to keep, I got to give a shout out to Shiro Game. Seriously, guys. This was an original idea. I've never seen anything done like this in the game before. And it, it seems like it's so simple, but man, I mean, when, once you like play something like this and it start, a game starts to evolve around you, it just makes you like, I don't know, it just brings a lot of interest. And 
Now you will meet other characters during the quest to help you along. Uh, I, one of the first characters I met was a magic user. You actually trying to help her uh, go home, and when you're helping her, you actually run into your first dungeon. And this one's pretty funny because it has a lot of trap doors and tricks to it. Kind of really, kind of like like got my energy back for like Zelda type games. I like puzzles like this. Well, there you guys have it, man. Uh, four super rare games, and uh, honestly, I think their future is very bright if they keep making titles like these. Um, like I said before, I mean, like I said, Human Fall Flat, not saying that's a bad game, but that just didn't really pique my interest. But from what I'm seeing from the company, they're actually putting out uh, better titles, so um, I look forward to seeing what they have in the future. So anyways, guys, that's all I got for you. Let me know what, how you feel about these games. If you think they're good or whatnot, or you, you think they are worth having a physical release, let me know in the comments. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you. Radical Reggie, and I will see you later.